During the 1960s, Her Majesty was growing into her reign as Queen of England. In 1966, that most famous of years, well, at least for the English, the Queen was 40 years of age. The 60s, of course, was a decade of momentous change. In just 10 short years, London transformed from a bleak, conservative city into the capital of the world, full of freedom, hope, and promise. It was the center of excitement, a city where anything and everything was possible. By the 1960s, the first teenage generation, free from conscription to serve in the armed forces, emerged in Britain. Young people were given a voice and the freedom to do what they wanted, for better or for worse. If you were a child in the 60s, as was I, you would have been playing with plastic soldiers, Barbie dolls, and trolls. I have no idea what they are. You would read about the adventures of Dennis the Menace in the Beano, and you will have watched Popeye on your new rented television. By 1965, you were paying the exorbitant price of £3,400 for a house. But of course, your annual, annual rate, excuse me, your annual wage had risen to the heady heights of £1,200. One of the biggest defining aspects of the 1960s was music. Although rock and roll had been around in the 50s, it wasn't until the early 60s and the emergence of the beat generation, groups like the Beatles, that music truly began its revolutionary change. The new musical wave in turn encouraged young people to stand up for their beliefs and their individuality. Thus, the hippie movement was born. I wonder how many of our choir today are hippies at heart. Yes, I'm sure I can see one or two back there. Fashion in the decade mirrored many of the social changes of the 60s. Mary Quant became famous for popularizing the miniskirt, which became the epitome of 1960s fashion. Technological advancements of the 60s drastically changed how people spent their leisure time. Did you have a pocket transistor radio, allowing you to spend your free time listening to pop music on the move. But of course, the decade was dominated by events happening 200,000 miles away. It started in 1961, when the Russian Yuri Gagarin became the first man into space. And in 1969, we all sat glued to our small, grainy, black and white pictures of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin becoming the first men on the moon. Perhaps it gave us all a measure of optimism and the dream of something bigger and better. Where does all this reminiscing leave us today when considering Her Majesty's 90th year? There is much that has changed in our lives. Some things for the good, others perhaps not so good. Through all of the shifting sand of life we experience, we need some constants. We need some things not to change, to always be there. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has proved to be a constant. The love of God our Father, shown to us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, is a constant, someone we can always rely on, always return to, always find refuge with. Lauren is now going to lead us in some prayers, and as we pray, give thanks to God for his ever-faithful presence with us.